chatting to my guest, but before the show, that um, a mutual friend of ours, Charles Lewis, Charlie Lewis of the National Post, terrific guy, and he writes about religion, and he gets thousands and thousands of responses and comments. It's not hyperbole, thousands of them. And then people still say, oh, no one cares about religion. Whether they oppose it or they love it, people care passionately about this subject. And something which comes up quite often now, time and time again, I suppose, is where private faith and the public square segue and connect, such as saying the Lord's Prayer, specifically Christian prayer, before council meetings, parliamentary meetings, political meetings. A lot of people would say, no, expunge it, get rid of it. It's church and state. And I know there's a lot of mythology that there is no separation and all that. But I've got to tell you, some of you might not approve of this, but frankly, if you're just mouthing the Lord's Prayer, giggling, you don't even believe in it, well, I'd, I'd rather you didn't say it at all. And maybe it doesn't have a place in, in, uh, in, in public debate. Justin Trottier, I've interviewed Justin many times. I think I, I, think I did I get, give you your, your first uh, appearance on a TV show? It was one of, the, one of the first few. I, I think, think your network was the first time I was oh, on TV. We created CBS. a monster. <laughs> what did we do? Uh, Center for Inquiry Canada? Yes. OK. Are you, are you the boss? Are you the president? The generalissimo? Uh, I'm the spokesperson. The spokesperson. I help set public policy. I help uh, communicate our message. You're the to public, public face the of, 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 of godless atheism, and you're going to rot in hell. But welcome <laughs> to the show. Now, what a great welcome! Thank you for that. I feel this, great at home. I'm sure you. Will. I mean, the, the premise for this is, uh, but there are so many cases. Is, is one man uh, in uh, uh, in the Ontario, Peter Ferguson, who is suing the local council for having the Lord's Prayer before council meetings. Look, I don't think this is a particularly important issue in, in many ways. There's all sorts of things that are more oh, pressing. I would agree completely. But does it matter? Well, I think it does. It's a symbol. It's a symbol of, as you introduced it, the intersection of religion, the public square, church-state separation, all of that. It does lend support to other more egregious violations, I would say, of church-state separation. For example, publicly funded religious schools, special yeah. privilege and exemptions to religion and other aspects of public life. And it isn't just this one municipality either. It's been all across Ontario. Recently, it was in Saskatoon. Things flared up there when an individual who was volunteering with the city, a man by the name of Ashu Solo, yeah. also filed a complaint. What was his name? Ashu Solo. Okay. It's got a very interesting Any relation to Napoleon name. Solo? I don't believe so. Yeah. I don't know him that well, to be honest. Um, <laughs> the man from Uncle figure, it doesn't matter. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, and also in Quebec. It's been an ongoing uh. issue in a number of municipalities in Quebec where it's really sparked a conversation about religious symbols in, has it, or is in it just, city council. Is it just very sad people with way too much time on their hands who want to make life difficult for others? No, I don't think so. You know, there's been a lot of criticism that Secular Ontario is a small grassroots group. This is the group that's supporting legally yeah. these complaints. But it is a grassroots initiative. It is individuals in the cities who are always behind the complaints. And they often do work behind the scenes diplomatically, politically, to make uh, the city councillors aware of their positions. And often that works. They don't have to take legal action. Okay, fair enough. Action. But I mean, he, he's suing the county for $5,000 in damages. And I can understand you going to, to a, a, an authority and saying... You know, I really believe that this should be a, a secular meeting and there should be no prayer. Yeah. But he tried that. He tried to go so in front suing, of them. It wasn't allowed in to. In what way has he been damaged? And, and why is it $5,000 worth of damage? Well, first of all, again, I just want to reiterate that he and others like him, that we always try, certainly when I'm involved, to go the diplomatic route. Mm. Very often we don't get our phone calls returned by the city councillors or the mayor in the case of Saskatoon, in this fellow's case in, in uh, may have had other things out to of, do. Uh, near Owen Sound. Um, well, it is part of the... Part of what's available to a, to a citizen is to yeah. be able to present a, a presentation in front of city council. He mm. wasn't given that ability to do so. It wasn't just that he wasn't responded to, he was refused that access. So at that point, what was he to do but take legal action? How is he being harmed? Well, I mean, how are people being harmed when there isn't a prayer? There's lots of cities where there are no prayers. Uh, University of Toronto and other universities, they've moved away from prayers. Nobody's complained about that. Well, they have, but they haven't been listened to very much. What, what in the prayer, uh, the Lord's Prayer, is particularly obnoxious to you? Well, there are, there are various things there. It's not so much the, the content. It's, it's For, forgiving trespasses. And it's, well, it's a bit harsh. Uh, some, some of these prayers actually invoke God as the, uh, as the origin of, of knowledge and wisdom. Our um, Father who uh, art in I'm heaven, sure hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom are, come. They will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. That's the Lord's we prayer. There are other, there are other versions. Us. And it's not from evil. So uh, uh, help us to avoid evil and help us to forgive others. But My golly, let, it's instead a war of, crime. Instead of criticizing the status quo, let me propose a better alternative, right. which is what we do already at the ballot boxes. When you go to vote, you have a statement which you either affirm or swear to. I would propose something like that, a civic pledge to the electorate. Sounds the electorate, sexy. The electorate vests our politicians with their real authority. And the brilliant thing, I think, about that approach is a politician who's religious can make that something they swear to God, and a politician yeah. who's not religious 
instead of having to leave the room or make their contrarian views conspicuously yeah. known, can simply affirm that 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 statement as, again, a pledge to the electorate. So I think there are other approaches we could take. I don't necessarily disagree with you, frankly. I, I don't think you're being unreasonable. And as I said at the, the beginning of this interview, if someone is going to mouth these words and we're you know, thinking, what am I going to have for lunch? And, oh, she's cute, isn't she? <laughs> then I'd rather they didn't say it at all. And it probably is no, that's a fair point. not for such, such a, a public sphere. But would you agree with me that beyond all this, that there, there is a particular contempt for in particular Christianity at the moment, where people who are Christian are told, we're just not interested in, in your view. And Christianity has led to some of the most wonderful progressive changes in Wilberforce and Clarkson and Martin Luther King and Shaftesbury and, and, and Tommy Douglas perhaps and so many others. Well, I agree with you on a bit on both points. On the first point, I think there are actually religious allies on this. I remember, again, the University of Toronto where I lobbied to have graduation prayer removed one of our allies was the Muslim officer, the Muslim anti-racism officer on campus. Similarly, he felt that it was artificial to, and it wasn't a, it wasn't a Justin, Christian prayer. It wasn't a Christian I know, prayer. It was a, look, it was a non-denominational prayer. I, I like prayer. you. You're a good guy, and you're, you're no fool. Uh, there are other, you know there are why other a Muslim anti-racism officer? First of all, I'm sorry. Oh, Islam, he defended chaplaincies on campus and other. Islam aspects has of an agenda, which is yeah. why so-called uh, chaplaincies often become. Mosques. Where, I mean, for example, uh, I can think of a leading one in Toronto. It's meant to be a, a, an ecumenical chapel. You have to remove your shoes to go in there. No, I see what you're saying. But he did defend other religious aspects of, of campus life. Yeah. And he did condemn what was a non-denominational, so perfectly uh, seemingly fine for Muslim kind of prayer. But also, I don't really care if it's fine for Muslims or not. I just think you do have an argument when you say we have a secular society now. And if you want to say that prayer to yourself... Um, if you want to cover your head with a yarmulke, whatever, you should be able to do that and be respected for right, it. Yeah. But it, saying we will all pray when most of the people there don't believe in the prayer is actually, to me as a Christian, quite offensive. And it, let's also remember, speaking of Muslims and other religious minorities, we are making, I think, positive progressive moves away from overtly Christian symbols towards non-denominational, all-inclusive, but still religious prayer. And that's to sort of welcome and include non-Christian minority religions, it, but they're more atheists than all the non-Christian religious or minorities Or is it a way to combined. attack Christianity? I mean, you, you have been consistent. I have to admire, I mean, the, the way I always mind Chris Hitchens on this, there, there are some atheists who I think pick and choose, but I think you, you have been uh, quite universal in this. The, the one religion, I'm sorry to go on about it, but the one religion that people are a bit nervous about criticizing and, and will allow uh, will change, will reform to accommodate, seems to be Islam. We had the school, the Musketeria, where, where you would never allow, a Christian group would never have that Absolutely. sort of authority. And I was on your colleague's show, you Ezra Levant, yeah. condemning that. I thought that was wrong as well. In this country, though, most of the time, it is because of the way uh, we were right. founded, to some extent, it's true. Those Christian symbols are still in our public square. And I do feel that in the name of progress and inclusion and tolerance, you know, we, need, we do need to deal with those issues. Well, I'm, I can't, I'm a huge enemy of, of progress and, and tolerance and all that sort of thing. But I tell you what, w when the day comes and, uh, and God says to me, Justin Trottier, did you know him? He's from Toronto. I will say, say no. I'll, no, I'll, say, no. He's, the other he, way. I'll say, Father, he's not so bad. Give him another chance. <laughs> okay, you've got my word on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you <laughs>